Now we're going to create a function that will allow us to specify the probability of a bang being produced. So I'm going to specify this with a slider, and I like to think in terms of percentages. So I'm going to change the range of this slider from its default value of 0 to 127 to 0 to 101, because 101 as a range will give us a value between 0 and 100. There's actually 101 values, so there's 0 and it goes up to 100. This is the value we're going to compare to a randomly changed value. So I'm going to create a random object, again with a value of 101, and every time I bang this random object, it's going to generate a number in that range. Because this is the number that's being generated on a continual basis, like every time I bang this, this is the side that's going to trigger the calculation. Now I'm going to compare these two numbers with a compare operator. If it's less than or equal to a particular number, I can initialize this with anything, but I'm going to leave it blank for now. I'm going to specify it with the output of this slider, and then my random bang comes into this area. And this is going to produce a condition that is either true or false. So I added a toggle here to display the result of the condition. If the slider is all the way down, uh, we should get zero true conditions because the values will always be out of range. If I give it a condition where it's 100%, the result should be always true. Now we just need to process the output of this true or false condition into the resulting bang. So if the condition is true, we want to output a bang. So I can just say select 1, and if that is true, then a bang is produced. So now, 100% of the time, I get a bang, and if the slider is down at 0, none of the time it's going to produce a bang, and if I have it at this 50% area, about 50% of the time I click on my mouse, it's going to generate a bang. Now that my function is done, I can graphically simplify it by encapsulating all the code of the object into a subpatcher. Now I can do that by going to the edit menu after I've selected the objects that I want to encapsulate and select encapsulate or command shift E from the edit menu. This is strictly a graphical convenience. It creates a subpatcher for you automatically. The subpatcher is indicated by this P, and that's an abbreviation for patcher. And you can actually go in and name this to whatever you want. I can call this uh, in enthuse. And if I want to see the contents of the subpatcher, I just double click on it. And this opens up a subpatcher window that allows me to see the contents. The connections that were previously connected to the bang and the slider and the output are replaced with inlets. So here's inlet number one, here's inlet number two, and if you graphically change these, you can see it updates on the screen, the order. So your order is determined by where they actually are on the screen. Now, this subpatcher is purely graphical. You can de encapsulate at any time by going to the edit menu and saying de encapsulate. I'm going to undo and go back, but I'm going to take this one step further. Like if I were to create a new version of this by option dragging or copy and paste, I can make some changes to this document and, or this subpatcher, I can change this condition to be something completely different. And these changes are not reflected in any other objects, even if they're named the same. If you do want that behavior, what you want is called an abstraction and not a subpatcher. You can easily create a abstraction many different ways, but this is my favorite way of doing it, is through the process of actually creating the subpatcher first. Because when you open your subpatcher, you can create an abstraction, which is nothing more than a max file by hitting save. So if I go to the file menu and say save as, I can create my own max object. And it depends heavily on where you save this. Inside of your documents folder is something called the, the max8 folder. And I like to put my custom objects in my library folder. So here's my enthusiasm object, and I'm going to save that into that folder. And now I can get rid of the subpatcher and recall this file from any patcher that I create in Max from this point forward. So if I now say enthuse, autocomplete recognizes enthuse as a new Max object, 
and the P is gone because it's no longer a subpatcher. It's now behaving like a max object. And I can create a whole bunch of versions of this. I can change my file. Let's say I want to get rid of this toggle. Won't change the behavior of the abstraction. But what this means is when I save this file, any subsequent instantiations of this file also inherit the changes. So this is a great way to make reusable code in Max.